Welcome to Your Cyber Path, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job by sharing the secrets of experienced hiring managers and top cybersecurity professionals with you. Now, on to the show. What are some of those things you did to get that hands-on experience? So I, I love CTFs. I do. I try to do at least once, one a month. Um, sometimes I end up doing more, uh, but I think they're probably the best way to learn because it's a gamified experience, yes. you know? Um, and in, in my mind, it's easier to learn after doing something like how an attack works and like, then it is to, uh, go back and try to like, just explain it just from a different explanation. So it really helps me like get that, you know, foundational skill, like, Hey, you can talk about Nmap all day, but if I run a couple of Nmap scans and I understand like how the program works. It becomes really easy for me to like apply that to like an interview question. It's like, hey, what if you don't have Nmap? Oh, well, there are plenty of other uh, scanners that you can use, like uh, Mascam. Yep. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so when you're finding these CTFs, where are you finding them? Because I, I know I love doing CTFs as well. And you're right, it is an excellent experience, especially if you're doing some of the ones where they are team-based CTFs. Because if you're getting stuck, you can then go, oh, hey, I'm having problems. Hey. A, a, you can you help me with that too, right? Or A, a, a can you help me with that? Or Kip can you help me with that? And, and you guys can work together on things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where are you finding these different CTFs? And are they more individualized? You know, one person online, or are you doing it as a team? Um, I've I've done a mix. I, I sometimes I think it's important to work with the team because you get to see like learn that cooperation. But it's also important to work by yourself because sometimes you end up with a really great teammate who flies through all the challenges and then. You know, you're just stuck with the really difficult ones and you don't get as much learning. Um, so I, I, there's a mix on my part, like a, it's more 50 50, like team versus individual. Um, there's a website called CTF Time. They have a ton. Um, but oftentimes just being around people and just hearing about like, hey, what's coming up? Um, that, that's usually what motivates me. Um, anything ran by John Hammond is excellent. So I would, I would recommend taking, doing any CTF that he's associated with. Awesome. Yeah, I actually just pulled up uh, CTF Time. It's ctftime.org. Uh, and if you go there, you can find all of the upcoming CTFs uh, for the year. Um, and so, for instance, I'm looking right now, and there's literally uh, between now and the end of December, which is basically three weeks as the time of this recording, uh, there's about 15 or 20 that are up, uh, ready to go. And there's some that are attack and defense. Some of them are uh, Jeopardy style, where it's you know, basically you go and pick uh, with Jeopardy style. Basically, there's a, a board and there's different categories, and they may have difficulties from one to five. And so, if you pick five, you get 500 points. If you pick one, you get 100 points. And it's all about who gets the most points in, in that given time. And most of these CTFs run for one to two days at a time. Um, and you can do them over the weekend uh, or whatever they happen to be. Uh, some of them are free, some of them have some, some money uh, associated with them, depending on what you're doing. And it's for those, usually there's like an entry fee and then they, you know, divvy out the prize to whoever wins. But a lot of them are just free and easy to do. Uh, a lot of them are online and a lot of them are local as well. So uh, it's a great thing to look at, ctftime.org. Uh, we'll put that in the show notes as well so people can uh, take a look at that and get an idea uh, of that. 